let's make that flag now. I'll go and bring in another cloth new primitive and it'll be plain. It'll have uh, a size of maybe two meters and it'll have 100 divisions. That's okay, but it won't have the Y positive. It'll have something like the uh, Z or X positive. Let's do Z positive and that means it won't lie flat. It should now stand up. Doesn't look much like a flag. Let's put it right in the middle and stretch it down a little bit so that it looks more like, you know, more like a flag here. And the flag is going to be moved by the wind modifier. I'll do this because I'll show you another aspect of DeForce and that is the weight nodes. So I'll select it first with the surfaces tab. I'll give it a nice little color again. Any particular color, maybe like a dark purple. Is that a good color? Loving it already. And once again, if I hit the big simulate button, DeForce is going to tell me, hey, this thing doesn't have anything that I can simulate. So let's go do this again on the little hamburger icon in the simulation settings tab. Let's go and add a DeForce dynamic surface. That gives me all the simulation properties here. You can go and simulate this again. And you think, hey, that's not very exciting. The, the whole thing just falls to the floor. Well, that's that's lame, isn't it? That's not the kind of flag behavior we we're looking for. So let's not do that. There's something else that we need to do here. Uh, one of two things, in fact, we can go and escape to stop the simulation. We could say, hey, the gravity, maybe I don't want this thing to pull my flag down. Maybe I'll set the gravity to zero. That's a possibility. But because we've got that wind node there, what is likely is that it'll start simulating and should it now not just blow the flag away? I guess it doesn't. But it also doesn't move. So also not the solution we were looking for. So the, the way around this is that DeForce allows you to add something called the weight map that you might be familiar with from other properties. The weight map is technically a texture that is applied to the whole object that lets DeForce know how much a part of an object should be influenced. So let's set the gravity back to one. And I'll show you what I mean by that. What I can tell DeForce is to say, hey, rather than influence everything here, make sure part of my flag is not influenced. And that would be commonly on this side where the flag's attached to the flag pole. So there needs to be a small little strip that exists in geometry, but that isn't influenced by DeForce and hence also not wafted in the wind. And let me show you how that works. So we need a combination of the geometry editor and the weight note brush to make that happen. Let's start with the geometry editor first to make Make our selection here. This is a little scary if you're not familiar with the geometry editor. It's either this little icon here or it's also under the tools menu and it's here the geometry editor. Alt Shift G is the default keyboard shortcut for that. If you change to that then another tab is important to work with it which is the tool settings tab. This shows you all kinds of exciting things. You might also want to go and switch over to something that shows you the wireframe of your object. And let's go and mark maybe the two polygons on the on the right hand side with that. If you right click, it has all these types of contextual menus here. And one of them is the drag selection on selection mode drag selection. If you do that, then you can left click and drag on your object and make a selection that you want to do something with. I don't really want to do that. I mean, I could with a really steady hand try and do this, but I can already see I'm not I'm not a master at that. So there's a there's another way to do that. You can look at this directly from an angle like the front or the right, depending on what we need. Change the selection mode once again by right clicking and saying selection mode marquee selection. And that now lets you left click and drag barely visible in the stream, but you can now left click and drag and then just basically select a whole uh, group of polygons here. So this is my selection with it in place. You can just save it. You don't have to. You go over to the next tool, which is this one here. That is the weight brush tool. And you can either click that or you can go and uh, use it from the tool option here. Note weight map brush. And once again, have the tool settings open. Your selection is still in place. You just don't see it yet because we currently don't have a DeForce weight map on our object. We need to create that first. So that means we need to go and select our plane, head over here to create and choose 
defaults modifier weight node. And when we do that, that map gets applied to our object. It also comes up with a little context dialog that offers to parent it to our current plane. Let's do that. It just comes up underneath it and it's kind of, you know, in there. Now we can see the selection. That is just the node. That's not actually the map. I'm so sorry. It's just so complicated, but you know, it's, bear with me and follow these steps at home. It'll be just, it'll be just awesome. Once you get to know this principle, you're going to have lots of fun with that. We have the node, we don't have the map yet. So for that, we need to go and pick one from here. You have all kinds of types of maps that allows clothing creators to really be granular about what their clothing needs to look like. We're happy with the influence weights and just hit add map and that will now make your map. You can see that everything's red. Red means 100% influence. So everything, and this is exactly what we have by default, everything on an object is influenced. What we want to do now is subtract the influence from this selection on the right hand side that we've made with the geometry editor. So to do that, there's another exciting little tool for that. You can just right click somewhere here and say weight editing, fill selected. And currently they're filled with 100% of influence, but we don't want to do that. We go and say fill selected and bring up that little window over here and say, well, it's actually 79%. I'm going to go and turn this to zero. So this strip that simulates the flag being attached to the flagpole, I don't want to participate in our simulation at all. And if I hit apply, then you can see that the color changes here. Let me go take the selection away, geometry selection, clear all. And then you can see that it's kind of, it's changed color here. I can go back to filament and try to get out of this and try to simulate my cloth again. Let me choose my universal manipulator again and try my simulation again. See what happens. See if it's actually worked. It has worked. Look at that. A strip of my cloth is not being moved at all. And the rest of the flag, while it kind of collapses, so it's not exactly what I wanted, but in principle, the thing that I didn't want to influence is still a static object. And all the other polygons on this flag are now wafting around, which is kind of cool. And uh, once again, 3D is emulating reality there. If you've seen what some flags have built in is that they have a little bit of a stabilizer at the top of the flag that holds the flag up. Maybe not completely, so it's not 100% um, stiff, or in our case, it doesn't have 0% influence. But we can make another selection on our object and just uh, take the influence off a little bit so that it doesn't collapse in on itself like this, but just is a little bit stronger at the top. Yes, f play around with it and see what you find. So this, yeah, this is kind of, I'd like for it to stay like this, but I don't want it to do that. I'd like for it to move around and waft around, but I don't want it to do that. So let's go and see if we can do that. I'll go and look at it from the front again. It's kind of cool. You have to just uh, repeat these steps time and time again. The first thing we need to do, make sure our object is selected. Wait notes, perfect. Let's go check that geometry editor once again. And let's go and look at some wireframes here, like so. And let's go and just like we did before, let's select the top, like the first two rather than the first one. That's not, not that important. Three is also good. Three is also good. We've selected that. Let's go back to the node weight brush tool and then right click and fill that, uh, not with zero because that makes it also completely static. That means nothing is going to move. We're going to go and fill selected with something like, I don't know, let's try 80, 80 or 90, something like that. You can try multiple values there and just see how it comes out. I'm going to try 80. So the top is it still has some influence, but not all the influence that the rest of this has. And uh, back on the simulation settings and simulate, see what happens. Fingers crossed and it's getting there. It's getting there. Look at that. It's a flag. It's moving. It's moving. I mean, you can also, if you have a longer animation, you want to make it more interesting. Imagine what would happen if you take the wind note and you'd animate the wind note that it goes like a fan just from left to right and back. That'll agitate the flag. So I love little experiments like that. And it just, you know, if you keep playing with it, look at how beautiful that looks. Quite crazy. Uh, you can make it longer. You can simulate it longer. Try 300 frames and just let it waft in the wind 500 or 1000 frames. You can roll around it. You can decal your logo onto it or you can make a texture that makes us look cool. And we've only done this in like, you know, a few minutes. If you know where to look for these things, it's just absolutely awesome.